It seems to me that one of the greatest secrets that has been kept from us and yet given to us by NASA themselves for the last three or four decades, they constantly tell us that there's water everywhere in space. But that's not what we perceive, right? If I told you there's water in space everywhere, you'd say, well, you're an idiot. Space is a vacuum. We know space is a vacuum. There's nothing there. And yet that's not the case. And when you start researching space and water, it becomes mind-blowing. Article after article after article after press release and press release about water in space in amounts that are completely mind-blowing. Ocean worlds, water in the solar system and beyond. In 2009, NASA found a sprawling cloud of cold water vapor around a solar system to a nearby star. The water vapor could eventually deliver oceans to dry planets that are forming in the system. It's water vapor. It's not water in some weird thing. It's water vapor they're talking about here could eventually bring oceans to new planets forming this is just a little disturbing the famous eye of god nebula actually weeping tears of water wow so there's water coming out of this nebula this is not just a solar system this is a nebula this is a place where galaxies are born stars and galaxies are born in a nebula and water is coming out of this can you imagine the size of the water that's coming out of a nebula it's like one drop of that will engulf our entire solar system and it just goes on. You know, oceans detected in, inside Saturn's moon and stars found shooting water bullets. NASA confirms best ever evidence water on Mars. Water from Orion. Now there's water coming out of the constellation of Orion. And, and this is a big one. Star found shooting water bullets. I mean, a star shooting water bullets. A star is supposed to be a sun. There's water on a star. Then they do a study, NASA, and they say basically all stars have water. This is the conclusion. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to read the final print you can do this yourself all stars have water that's the conclusion and stella sprinkler nourishes galactic garden wow i didn't realize there was a garden out there in the cosmos being watered by some stella sprinkler that's lovely i'd love to see this garden wonder how big those plants are dude man wow this is like bigger than the tree in on, on pandora <laughs> and then water on the sun stanford university she tells us that there's water on the sun and even better a more appropriately named university waterloo University tells us that there's water on the sun. It seems to me that the universe and the water are the same thing. On the left is one of those deep space images of the universe. On the right is a picture of a swimming pool. And I think you start seeing what's going on here. And the lies and the deceptions are getting bigger and bigger. Also keep in mind that many of the images that we get shown by NASA come from radio telescopes, not from optical telescopes where they actually photograph an object. It's a radio telescope that brings radio signals and then they convert those into beautiful images through NASA's artistic impression graphic designers, right? So these are often you don't see pictures. These are radio telescopes. Our very own solar system is completely surrounded by water they tell us it's ice but can we believe them is it ice or is it water like water vapor like that other thing i don't know but we call it the caper belt it's a belt in a disc that surrounds the outer perimeter of the disc of our own solar system so is the caper belt this huge amount of ice right that whole thing is now completely engulfed by more water called the Oort cloud that completely engulfs our entire solar system. It looks something like that. So suddenly our own solar system is made up of water, surrounded by water, and yet there's supposed to be vacuum in space. How does this work? Where does that vacuum in the water, how does that break up? How does it work? Where does the water go? Where does the vacuum begin or end? And it's, it's a little confusing for me, but uh, we know that there's water in space because they keep telling us there's water in space. So suddenly the Bible makes a lot more sense to me because I've always had a problem with one of those statements in the opening phrases of the Bible when the Spirit of God moved over the waters. How can the Spirit of God move over the waters when nothing has been created yet? Surely water should be part of the creation. And I'm starting to see now why water is so sacred. Is it possible that water is so sacred because water is actually foundation of all creation or is connected to all creation? Well, if you look at chemistry, it's 
seems like it because between oxygen and hydrogen you've pretty much the same got the same elements in every other chemical reaction or chemical formula hydrogen and oxygen are part of pretty much everything you cannot separate it hydrogen and oxygen make water so it starts to get really interesting and compelling to think that water is actually made up of space and God said let there be light so the Spirit of God is moving across the waters and it's the sound of the Creator that makes the light. How does that work? Well, in modern science, it's known as sonoluminescence. When you put a sound frequency into a body of water, after a little while, a beautiful bubble appears filled with light. Sound in water, sonoluminescence. God said, let there be light. But if space is water, where does the watery space begin? Where is the edge? Well, if we start listening to what the Bible tells us in some ancient scriptures, maybe we should listen to all of it. It says, God placed the firmament in the sky to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters below. I have no idea what that means, but I'm starting to get an interesting picture. And then how did God create the flood? It tells us God opened the gates of heaven to let the water pour in on the earth. Okay, now I'm starting to see how you can create a flood. If space is water, it's starting to make more sense. And then suddenly, vacuum just becomes a myth and not a scientific fact. Because the simple basic physics of a vacuum in space is just doesn't work. There are any scientists that actually just think about this, or physicists, the whole thing of vacuum in space is just not compatible with any kind of physics formula or physics that we can put to it. Where does the vacuum begin? Vacuum is one of the most powerful forces of nature. Where does that vacuum begin? We often get confused between gravity free and vacuum. They're not the same thing. Just because there's no gravity doesn't mean you're in a vacuum. And just because you're in a vacuum doesn't mean there's no gravity. The two are not the same thing. So don't get confused by vacuum and gravity free. What you can't do in space or in a vacuum, what you can't do in an infinite vacuum is you can't propel sound, you can't have explosions, fire, propulsion, jet engines, rockets, none of this stuff. Can't do that because there's nothing to propel against. And then these guys on YouTube that make these vacuum tubes, they go, oh, look, I created a vacuum tube in my garage. I'll show you that you can propel a rocket in a vacuum. I go, really? You've lost your brain. You're comparing a fishbowl in your garage to the infinite vacuum of space? You really lost your mind, dude. And then you start watching like SpaceX sending a rocket up into space and the very well-trained uh, presenter that's got all the buzzwords, she knows all the lingo and all the buzzwords. And, uh, at one stage I was watching and she says, and the rocket is about to enter the vacuum of space. Uh, really? And millions of people are watching this and they believe this. You see, they just, oh, the rocket just entered the vacuum of space. Where? How, how did it, where? Please freaking explain that to me in scientific terms, not in BS terms. Oh, you won't understand it. No, please try me. I want to understand this. Explain to me where that vacuum begins.